students. Welcome to this second lesson in my Learning Visual Basic series. In this two-part lesson, we're going to make a unit conversion program. Then we're going to add a second form and menu bar to do a Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion. Let's begin. So I'm going to start off by creating a new project. As always, it's going to be a Windows Forms app. I'm going to change the name. I'm just going to call it Converter. And I'll say OK. Here's the background for my program. I'm going to change the title from Form 1 to something a little more appropriate. Let's say Convert to meters. And now let's add some controls. As always, we go to our toolbox. I'm going to add a button. Give it a better description under the text property. I'll call it convert. So this will be the button we click after we've entered our data and we want the actual conversion calculation to occur. Now I'm going to add a text box so we have a way to enter data. I'll add a label for output. In Visual Basic, you can cut and paste controls. So if I go Control C and Control V, paste on label two, and I'm going to change the text to output in meters. Let's slide that over so it doesn't end up there. I'll put a colon after it. Now press Control V again to paste in another label. Oops. And this label, I'm going to tell the user what to do. I'm going to say Enter. As always, when I double click the button, it's going to create the most common event handler for that uh, control. So I'm going to double click my button. It creates an event handler that responds to a button click. I'm going to do this a little bit uh, formally. So I'm going to declare a couple variables. To declare a variable, you say dim the variable you want, and then the type of variable. You can have integers or doubles, you can have long floats. For the sake of this class, you only really need to worry about integers and doubles. You will use integers when you're counting, use doubles for any kind of measurement. Doubles have decimals, integers are always whole numbers. So I'm going to say dim meters as double, and I'll say dim beat as double. Now I have two variables. I need to load those variables with some information. 
so I'm going to read my text box and I will say beat equals the value text box one dot text. Oops. Using the val function is the proper formal way to convert text into a numeric value. Now I'm going to do the conversion. I'll say meters equals feet times three zero four eight. And then I'm going to send that output to the screen, which is label one. So you notice that label one is sending text to the screen under the text property. So I should really convert meters to text. So let's do that. Convert. Look at that. I was using the old form of the command, str. VB has automatically said that I use conversion.str. Okay, so let's do that. Conversion.str meters and if we've done everything correctly this should run. Let's test it. Should have saved it. Build succeeded. Good. Turn the number of feet. I'll say 10 feet. Hit the convert button. And 10 feet equals 3.048 meters. Okay. So that works nicely. What we should have, though, is an elegant way to end our program. Currently, we have to hit the little X button in the corner to stop the program execution. So let's fix that before we go on. I'm going to copy the button, and I'll paste another one on the screen. Now I have to tell the button what to do, so I'll double-click it. The command to end a Windows program in VB is simply end. Let's run it. Well, let's save it so we don't have the error message. That looks good. Create a new folder called Converter. The mathematical functions still works fine. Oops, I forgot to change the text on the second, uh, excuse me, on the new end button. So let's fix that. There. Save it. Run it. Okay, very nice. Everything's working properly. In the first part of the program, I declared the variables in the event handler button click. Meters and feet do not exist in this event handler down here. I would have to redefine them down here if I wanted to use them in this end function. If I want to have my variables global so that these remain defined 
even when other functions are going on. I could cut them, I'll control X to cut them. And if I put them up top, above all of the event handlers, this makes them global. And this can be good or bad. I tend to use a lot of global variables. I know some people don't care for that method. Uh, but I've never had a problem with it. So use them judiciously. I would think most programmers would like to see them defined in the most narrow scope possible. So if you need them to exist in all the event handlers, put them under the class statement. Otherwise, put them in the appropriate event handler. I'm going to end the the video here and then we're going to do part two where we add the menu strip and be able to toggle between multiple different calculators. Let's continue this lesson. In this second part of the lesson we're going to learn to create a multi-format. We're going to use a menu strip that will allow us to toggle between the two different forms. We're going to add a control module so that we can make functions and subroutines that can act, be accessed by any event handler on any form throughout our program. And then we're going to set the startup form in the Solution Explorer. So let's begin. I'm going to start off by adding a new form. So I'll go to Project, Add Windows Form. And I'll choose Windows Form. You can see it automatically names it Form 2. So you could call it anything you want. There's my second form. So on this form, we're going to create a Fahrenheit to Celsius converter. Being just a one line uh, converter, I'm going to use all the controls from the first form. So I come to form one. I can put a box around them all. I'm hitting Control C to copy them to the clipboard. Go over to Form 2, paste them. And now I just have to change some of the titles. So the end is good, convert is fine. This label will change to Enter the temperature and the Fahrenheit. And slide that over. We'll change this to Celsius. Okay, looks good. So we have to change our formula now. So I'm going to double click on my convert button. As you can tell, the event handler was not pasted over with the controls. So I need to define some variables. Dim Fahrenheit press double. Yes. Press double. I'm going to see. I will read in Fahrenheit from text box one. So Fahrenheit.
So again, the val command is just converting the text on the screen into a number. Do my conversion formula. Very nice. Now I have to output it to the screen. So I'll say label one dot text equals and I'm converting the number back to a string so that it matches with the text property. Now what I'm missing is the end function on form two. So I'll go back to the design, double click the end button, and add the end command. I'll save it. I don't see any red bands, so that's good. It's not detecting any errors. And let's run it. Uh-oh, I can't get to my form. Let's fix that. And we're going to fix it Oops. by going to form one, and we're going to drag a menu strip. onto the form. Perfect. Well, let's just abbreviate it. F to C. If I want to move over one, I can go in the adjacent box. feet to meters. If I wanted to go downward with a list, I would simply start typing in this box. Every time I press enter, it would give me another box to go downward. Go. And I will copy control C this menu strip on form two. I'm going back to form one. Now, I'm asking myself, does this make sense? I'm going to delete this entry. but now we're back on track. So if I double click on this menu item and act with any other control, it's going to create the most common event handler. So convert F to C on the tool strip handles. Convert F to C, click. In order to show the other form, what we need to do is hide the current form we're on, and we refer to the current form as me. Don't ask me what code monkey came up with this, but they did. So I'm going to hide the current form, and then I'm going to show form two. These are called methods. 
So it's the hide method and the shell method. And I will save that. Now I'm going to go over to form two. So in form two, I want to have just the entry that takes me back to the opposite form. And while I'm here, I will change the title of my form. Now I have to add the code. So the currently active form will be hidden. And I will show form one. Save your program. And let's run it and see what happens. So I'm in the convert feet to meters. Let's make sure it works. So I'll put in 100 feet. 30.48 meters. Looks good. Now we'll click on the convert F to C. And it takes us to the convert F to C form. And my menu has changed. So if I want to go back, I can just click on the menu strip. Let's test to see if our code works. So I'm going to enter 212, the boiling point of water, and it should come up 100 C. And it does. Now imagine the scenario where you want to have convert F to C come up first. How do you do that? Well, First off, we have to end our program so we can make changes. Then you come over here to the Solution Explorer. Under My Project, you'll see Startup Form. And this is the one that comes up first. So if I want F to C to come up first, I'll simply choose Form 2. Save it. And go back to Programming. Now when I run it, I'll hit F5, F to C comes up first. I'm going to stop here, and then we're going to move on with this program. We'll add a code module. Now that we've gone over how to make a multi-form application, Let's go over using a code module. So why in the world do you want to do this? Well, imagine a scenario where you want to have global variables that are accessible by every single form throughout the program. Or maybe you want to have functions and subroutines that can be called by any form anywhere. This kind of global declaration is done in a code module. So let's look at how to add one. To add a code module to your program, click Project, Add Module. Select Module, and I'm going to call it Module 1. I've been working on this file before, so it says it exists. Do I want to replace it? In this case, yes. So here we are in our code module. There are no controls associated with the code module. There's no design form associated with a code module. It's simply just a listing of code. So if I want to create a global variable that's accessible anywhere, I can do it by saying public and I'm going to choose a variable name my global variable now my global variable is accessible by 
any of the subroutines, any of the event handlers, anywhere throughout the program all the time. Okay. So now let's imagine we want to create a subroutine or a function. It can be thought of either way. To create a subroutine that's accessible by any of the forms, I'm going to say public. I'm going to declare a subroutine, so I say sub. I'm going to say convert beat. Now I have to pass it information. If I say by, um, well, let me just type it out, then I'll explain it. I'm going to say by val. So what did I just type? I've created a subroutine, which is convert feet to meters. When I say by val, that means I'm passing information in one direction only. So in the first location before the comma, the subroutine is going to receive information that cannot be passed back. If I do want to send information back, to the calling subroutine or to the call function, I do by ref. By ref sends information back. Now I've got my variable declared and I can say meters equals feet times 3048. And that is a legal subroutine call. If I want to call that from, uh, my from my event handler, I'm going to cheat and just copy it. I'm going to go back to form one. And instead of having all of this, I can simply do a subroutine call. Now it's a bit overkill for this application, but if the program became much, much larger and the function were called many times from many places, this would be a very clean execution. So I'm inputting feet and I'm getting back meters. Let's run it and make sure it works. I'm going to save it so I don't get error messages, and I'll hit Start. Entering the number of feet, I hit Convert. The subroutine in the code module is called, and it outputs the correct value. So that looks good. Yeah, let's go back to our code module now. And let's do the same thing for the Fahrenheit to Celsius converter. So I will say public because I want it to be accessible anywhere. Subroutine. So I use a sub command. I'll say convert f. C. I'll say by val f as double comma by ref c 
C as double. So I'm receiving F, I'm sending back C. Because I'm receiving F, I'm not going to want to change it. And I'm going to calculate C and send that back. So I add the equation. C equals F minus 32 times 5 ninths. And I'll copy my function call. Go over to form 2. And instead of having the formula here, I'm going to paste in my function call. Put in Fahrenheit. There's my function call. So the new value gets put in Celsius. Celsius gets converted to a string and sent to the text property of label one on form two. Save it. Run it and see if it works. This time we're in the proper form. So I'll enter 212, hit convert, and it properly outputs the degrees in Celsius. And we'll hit end. So that ends the lesson for today. Thank you very much.